What's happening guys, Salam Mike back with another Fix Your Form Technique video. Today we are covering the squats, trying to help you guys out. If you want to get involved, you can email ask, M-I-K-K-E at gmail.com. Give me a front view, side view, three reps at 70%. I'll see if I can help you guys out. Be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications so you guys can stick around and catch all the content, my friends. With this first uh, gentleman, Getting a little bit on your toes, my friend. So what I might suggest is um, perhaps breaking at the knees a little bit earlier on the squat and pushing into those knees. Um, also, cleaning up your calves and your ankles a little bit, forcing those knees out. Um, the type of footwear may not be helping. It's hard to tell. They kind of look like just some trainers. Uh, so a flatter shoe will allow you to uh, feel the ground a little bit better with your entire foot. Forcing your knee out will allow your hips to travel down more smoothly. So then you're not tipping forward in the beginning uh, and at the end onto your toes. We want the general weight of our body and the barbell dispersed throughout our entire foot mostly on that midfoot, but we want our whole foot onto the ground and forcing your knees out with a flatter shoe uh, will allow you to maintain that the entire time. Um, general mechanics are looking decent, except for the fact that you're getting pitched forward. So that may be some ankle calf that needs cleaning up. Just Google some stretches or some mobility you can do on that guy. Uh, but the flatter shoe and forcing those knees out, I think will be key uh, to cleaning that guy up here we go second squat i don't love that walkout guys when we walk out we want to get the most efficient way uh, to give us space from the rack so two to three steps end up in your squat form looks actually pretty dang decent uh, we got a little bit overarching um, extension in that low back so what i'd like to see you do is breathe and brace a little bit harder uh, people ask all the time mike do a whole video on it i've done tons of videos on breathing and bracing basically what we want to do is breathe into our belly button our sides our obliques and our low back and almost crunch down we want a straight line a firm controlled midline you heard me firm and controlled uh, from our hips to our shoulders and that'll allow us to push into the ground uh, keeping that midline stiff, pushing and transferring the strength and the power into the barbell. Um, so you're a little overarched and with lighter weights, it won't be an issue. Under heavier weights, uh, it will be a major issue and it can cause injury over time. Uh, you can see a little bobble there in the hole. So something like a pause squat may also help you. I believe this is the same uh, gentleman. Um, so pause squats may help you control that hole a little bit better and time your rebound and bracing that midsection uh, will help in the long run. I don't like the hands waving hello and goodbye in between the rep. We should be squeezing that bar as tight as we can and pulling it down into our back. We're squeezing our lats, uh, which is the last piece to control that midsection. Just like in the deadlift, just like in the bench, if we breathe and brace correctly, if we squ uh, pull the bar into us differently, but still uh, using our lats in both the squat, bench, and deadlift, uh, we'll really control and have a stiff midline. Controlled midline will help. So grab that bar tight. We say white knuckles in all three lifts. Um, pulling that bar in the squat, especially with your bar position, pulling those elbows down and together will flex your lats, flexing that midline. But overall, uh, overall looks pretty dang solid, my friend. Uh, may want to control uh, that eccentric just a little bit again because of that bobble. So a tempo squat, a pause squat, uh, good accessories for you to build that pattern over time uh, and work on that breathing and bracing, my friends. That will be the key to everyone's safety, everyone's longevity, and everyone's gains in all lifts. Overhead, clean and jerk, snatch, squat, bench. I don't care what it is. The more you can breathe and brace, the better you'll be. This guy uh, looks like he's losing a little control. That first rep of that second rep looks a little bit better. Third rep, uh, a little bit off as well. We'll try to see that bar position, what may help you. Um, guys, try to get the video landscape if you're sending it in um, in, in as high quality as you can. I think a lower bar position for you will help a lot with that pitching forward. Um, the lower body's moving pretty good, but so what's happening is your hips are shooting up uh, a little bit early and then you're getting pitched forward. It could be the heels, a lower heel or a flat shoe may do you uh, a benefit as well. Um, a weightlifting shoe does allow some people to hit depth. You, you're even a little a hair high, so have some patience on the way down. Control that eccentric. We want to be quick but don't hurry my friends so we talk about it a lot um, you do want to be explosive and you do want to move quickly on the eccentric of the squat and the bench but not if it's pushing you out of position you want to be as fast and as explosive and as powerful as you can while maintaining a good position this uh, angle should tell us a little bit more of what's going on but the heel may just be a little too high 
um, a little smaller heel or even a flat shoe, doing some pause squats, getting used to the depth. It looks like you're hitting that uh, depth and trying to rush your way up, and that's where you're losing control into the hole, which is quite common. Uh, I talk about pace in the squat, how you uh, control your way down, explode your way up, and what pace you go up and down is key to a big squat. From this angle, it looks pretty dang solid actually, but uh, I think overall what we need is a hair more depth. So have some patience on the way down, control on the way down. Uh, and we also, uh, a, a lower bar position for you, my friend, may do better. So if you can squeeze your back a little bit tighter and move that bar down, um, two to three inches will be in a better position there. Um, white knuckles again, squeezing that bar as tight as you can, pulling it down into your back. Uh, I'm not sure if this camera is right on, but it looks like your right foot is turned out a little bit more than left. Uh, we want to be as symmetrical as possible. Um, over time, you know, baseball players, golfers, things of that nature, you get a repetition injuries because they're just throwing and throwing and throwing. Um, Tommy John, etc. Different tendon issues, elbows issues, shoulder issues. The same can happen for powerlifting, except now we're adding heavy loads. So you want to really be sure to control your form and technique as well as be as symmetrical as possible or you may over time get something a little jacked up in that right hip or even possible in the left hip because you're overcompensating looking solid so far not bad we got a long femur gentlemen it looks like a just a little bit awkward for you to squat but that overall looks pretty dang good uh breathing's pretty solid uh for you my friend i also might recommend a flat shoe um I know weightlifting shoes, they look cool, they're the accessory, everyone squats 315 and they want to grab themselves some fancy weightlifting shoes, but um, many a powerlifter squat a big weight in a flat shoe, and I think many people um, can be overall better uh, movement patterns, and better squatters with a flatter shoe, so uh, everything so far looks pretty dang decent, uh, but I just think that with a wider, a slightly wider stance, getting your heels out a bit more, and perhaps... A flat shoe, you can really force those knees out, um, and it'll make you a little bit more efficient. Overall, it's pretty solid. Uh, you're doing the best you can with these leverages. Pushing your hips back may help as well. Um, knees going forward, traveling towards your toes, or going forward is not bad by any means. It looks a little better from this angle. Um, a slightly... Yeah, it looks pretty good, man. Tight back, tight middle. Everything looks pretty solid, but pushing back with your hips may help you a little bit. Um, Get that posterior action a little bit and a little bit for less forward knee travel for this individual. Uh, many people, some forward knee travel uh, is not going to injure you. It's not going to be harmful. It's a great way to build quads. It's a great general way to squat. But uh, for each individual, we'll kind of have to find how much our hips have to go back, knees forward or knees out, depending on mobility and how you're built. And this gentleman, I do think um, kicking your heels out just a hair, maybe trying a flat shoe, just give it a go. Uh, and pushing your hap, hips excuse me, back uh, just a little bit may help you long term. Setting it up for the perfect camera angle to get the Instagram likes because that's what brings in the paychecks in 2018. That's what I hear from all the gurus. A lot of likes, a lot of zeros in my bank account. Here we go. Nice long setup. Again, we're kind of in a higher bar position. Um, bar position and lower body and how it moves hip dominant or quad dominant aren't always um, the same so people talk about high bar low bar i do think that most people with the lower bar position will end up squatting more weight in the long run but depending on how you're built a higher bar position may be okay uh, overall looks pretty dang decent uh, what we're having is i did a video on a while ago when we talk about breaking at the hips we still want that midline in a straight stiff uh line so we want from our hips to shoulders to be straight you're over arched here and then you over arch a little bit more and cock your hips back the stripper booty before going down when we say hips back you see how there's a, even more over arch um, force those knees out and you want to your entire body angle will end up shifting slightly to push your hips back a hip hinge is something that everyone must master for not only sports but lifting the hip hinge is what people are lacking in the deadlift in the stiff leg they're dropping their chest forward or they're bending and hinging on their low back we want to hip hinge so breathing and bracing flexing those lats forcing your entire hips back not just cocking your butt back um, like the twerk we're not trying to twerk here. We're trying to load the posterior chain um, by getting a slight angle. Uh, again, I think a lower bar position for you, my friend, may help. Breathing and bracing, not shifting your hips back, but hinging your hips back. 
You can see that belt line, if he was wearing a belt or your belly button starts to face the ground, and that's because that hip. Um, forcing your knees out a little bit more may help as well. Go, again, knees going forward is not an issue, uh, but opening up at the hips or the taint, as the great Ed Cohn said, um, which actually does make sense, opening up at the hip region rather than just the knee. Again, knees out, screwing into the ground, all those are cues, but what we're really trying to do is open up at the hips. So if you have chub rub, try to think about spreading that chub rub and letting some air flow up the skirt region, um, not only for your sake uh, of your squat, but also general stench in that region may not be great. So opening up the hips, forcing those knees out, breathe and brace a little bit harder and teach yourself how to hip hinge. There's many ways to do it. There's many videos. I have one about pushing your hips back. Uh, I talked about it a lot in the last deadlift video from last week. Again, we're dropping these type of technique videos every Sunday, every Saturday, some type of form or informational video, Tuesday, Thursday, travel vlogs, gym vlogs, general entertainment information coming your way, guys. I appreciate all the support through all this. Be sure to subscribe, turn on the notifications, share this around with your friends. I do appreciate you. I do appreciate the support. Salam Mike. I'm out of here.